Good evening and welcome to the midweek edition of the news from DBS TV. Let's begin in Cameroon and precisely in the northwest region of the country. After visiting the west region on Monday, October 19, Minister George Elanga Obam of Decentralization and Local Development arrived in Bamenda in a well-secured armored car 24 hours later for a work visit. Welcomed by the Northwest Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique, the minister was taken to inspect buildings within the Bamenda 1 subdivision, which are meant to host the regional council and upcoming regional elections. His visit ended with a working session with all the 34 mayors of the region, a meeting during which the minister expressed satisfaction on the exchange he had and what he saw. I came here to have a consultation with the administration on the high instructions of the President of the Republic to find a building that can host the regional council. The governor and I went to the town and we visited five buildings and I am sure one of the buildings will be a good one for the regional council. I also have a very fruitful discussion with the mayors. We had consideration about the human resources, about the finances, about the civil status and things like that. We gave some advices where it was necessary. We make strong recommendations and sometimes we get instructions. And I think at the end of the meeting all of us are satisfied with the exchange we had. Stakeholders in vocational training in Adamawa region have brainstormed in a sectoral meeting recently to look for ways to accommodate the ever-growing number of graduates from various professional training centers. It was an opportunity for these trainees to acquire the necessary techniques that will permit them to implement government policy as concerns professional training in Cameroon. This sectoral meeting equally marks the reopening of the 2020-2021 professional academic year, during which all those concerned in Adamawa were sensitized on this actual priority of the Ministry of Professional and Vocational Training. At the end of this ceremony, I think there will be a lot of things will change positively. For instance, the, the enrollment into SAR-STEM will increase. Then the implication of mayors in, the, in professional training concerning the competencies uh, transferred to councils, the, pro, uh, the delegation of uh, professional training, we have to follow up to see that the mayors are really implementing what the, the, the minister has transferred. Chaired by the Adamawa Regional Governor, Kildadi Buka, they used the opportunity to take stock of the last academic year and to map out working strategies for the new academic year so as to train young Cameroonians capable of integrating successfully in the socio-economic society of the country. The Cameroon National Anti-Corruption Commission, CONAC, has launched a back-to-school campaign in which members of the commission will be visiting schools in all the regions of the country in order to sensitize students and teachers against corruption and its dangers. The information is contained in a press release signed by the chairman of the National Anti-Corruption Commission, Reverend Dr. Diodone Masigams, published on October 19, 2020. It states that the anti-corruption campaign in the Cameroon educational milieu runs from October 19 to the 23rd under the theme 2020-2021 Back to School Without Corruption. The initiative also aims at encouraging the targeted Cameroonians to adopt integrity and honesty as their daily watchwords in order to fight the ravaging virus of corruption which is eating through the Cameroonian society. This follows a previous campaign in which CONAC officials fought corruption in the school milieu linked to registration of students. The CONAC teams in this fight recommend the creation of integrity clubs in the various schools of the country, both government and private, accompanying them with stickers and messages against corruption.
over to Funban in the west region of Cameroon. 63 public schools have received a minimum package of school didactic materials, sporting and first aid boxes from the Mayor, Honorable Patricia Ndamjoya. Also, the Literacy Center of Fumban received a special sound system and some equipment, meeting for the first time with the respective representatives and other after visiting the schools, she expressed there is a shortage of classrooms. We want school where students can have a space, more space. Schools where teachers can have more space. We imagine a library, we imagine a canteen, we imagine a lab stop uh, space because today without lab stop uh, we can't have uh, Android student for example and uh, for us parents, teachers and even uh, our children has to be like partners. Mayor Damjoya emphasized on the need to reorganize the educational system by providing an opportunity for school administrators to teach in line with the curriculum and merging it with practicals. This organization being talked about comes when Cameroon is facing multiple challenges from security to health, thus the need for effective decentralization. Decentralization for us means that schools has to be independent. They can have uh, uh, their own account, uh, uh, bank accounts and uh, we can give to them what they need and they can collect other support so that uh, themselves they can organize uh, at the beginning of the year, during uh, the academic year and even up to the end of the year they can be organized themselves. Preliminary results announced by the Election Commission in Guinea-Conakry says the octogenarian leader Alpha Conde has won four constituencies in the nation's presidential vote. Conde won three districts in the capital, Conakry, scoring over 50% of the vote in two of the districts and won Bofa district north of the capital with over 56%. The initial results showed he leads the total vote count so far. The head of the Electoral Commission, Cabinet Cissé, said more preliminary results from the Sunday vote will be announced in the days ahead. Conde's main rival, Selu Diallo, who said on Monday he had won the election, sparking violence with at least four killed, came second in all the districts according to the results released by the commission. Guinea's hotly contested election comes amid growing concerns about the reversal of democratic progress in West Africa. In August, Mali's government was overthrown by the army, while Ivory Coast has witnessed violent protests over President Alassane Ouattara's bid for a third term. Democratic Republic of Congo, more than 1,300 prisoners escaped from a jail in the eastern city of Beni on Tuesday, local Congolese officials said. According to the city's mayor, Modest Bakwana Maha, rebels of the Allied Democratic Forces and other rebel groups broke into the jail and released almost all the prisoners. Congolese police on Twitter said two prisoners were shot dead during the breakout from the Kangbai prison at around 4.30 a.m. local time. Only around 100 detainees did not leave the prison from the among 1,455 who were there, Mr. Modest said. The Deage group has claimed responsibility for the prison attack in an announcement on its AMAC news agency. It has recently claimed some attacks carried out by the ADF rebels but the exact relationship between the two groups are not clear. Kagbayi prison is used to hold errant army soldiers and military men captured in fighting, including some of the ADF. Jailbreaks are common in Congo, where conditions in detention facilities are said to be very bad.
A 24-hour curfew has come into force in Nigeria's largest city, Lagos, following days of peaceful protests against police brutality. The protests began with calls for a much-hated police unit, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS, to be disbanded, as well as sweeping reforms in the country. The curfew was initially scheduled to come into force in the afternoon of Tuesday, October 20, but protesters in the Leki and Alusa part of Lagos refused to disperse as they sang the national anthem and pledged to return or remain in the streets. This prompted the country's police chief to order the immediate nationwide deployment of anti-riot forces following increased attacks on police facilities, according to a spokesman. The governor of Lagos, Baba Jide Samwo Olu, has paid hospital visits to protesters who were injured in Tuesday's night shooting at Leki area, adding that forces beyond our direct control had made a dark history in the state. At least 15 people have been killed across Nigeria since the protests began, and on Tuesday, a police station in Lagos was set ablaze, while elsewhere, protesters were attacked by armed gangs. Burundi's former president Pierre Buyaga has been sentenced to life in prison in absentia over the assassination of his successor in 1993, according to a top court ruling. Buyaga, early this week, was convicted for an attack against the head of state over his role in the killing of the first democratically elected president, Melchior Ndadaye during a coup d'etat which plunged the country into a civil war. The court also sentenced 19 others in relation to the case, three of whom were given 20 years in prison. Many of those convicted did not appear in court since they were abroad. Those sentenced were also ordered to collectively pay a fine of 103 billion Burundian francs that is $53 million. Only five of the accused were present. Buyoga is currently the African Union's representative in Mali and a respected figure on the continent as well as overseas. As a Tutsi, he came to power in 1987 with the help of the army. He stepped down in 1993 when Ndadaye, a Hutu, was elected but Ndadaye was killed just four months later in an attempt coup by hardline Tutsi soldiers. In Europe, 27 EU countries have agreed on a common policy to reform the agricultural sector. It is a common agricultural policy with binding environmental rules which also aims to be simpler and fairer. A text which constitutes a good win-win situation according to the Commissioner for Agriculture. We attach a lot of importance to this green architecture, detailed the German Minister of Agriculture, Julia Klochner. On the other hand, by introducing eco-regulations which are mandatory, and on the other hand, by ensuring a mandatory minimum budget. Under this agreement, all farmers would be required to comply with much stricter environmental standards as a prerequisite for receiving European financial aid. The text will be subject of negotiations with the European Parliament, which votes this week on its own proposals. America's Department of Justice is set to file an antitrust lawsuit against technology giant Google, alleging that it has been abusing its dominance in online search to restrain competition, resulting in harm to consumers. Two decades ago, Google became a darling of Silicon Valley as a scrappy startup with an innovative way to search the emerging Internet. The Google is long gone the suit alleged. It's the government's most significant attempt to protect competition against its groundbreaking case against Microsoft more than 20 years later. The case filed in federal court in Washington alleges Google uses billions of dollars collected from advertisers to pay phone manufacturers to ensure Google is the default search engine on browsers. Critics have said 
multi-billion dollar fines and mandated changes to Google's practices imposed by European regulators in recent years weren't severe enough and that structural changes were needed for Google to change its conduct. Google vowed to defend itself as it responded immediately on Twitter. French President Emmanuel Macron has promised to step up a crackdown on Islamist extremism in France. This follows the beheading of a 47-year-old history teacher, Samuel Paty, in a Paris suburb on Friday while on his way back home from school. Wednesday evening, Macron attends an official memorial with Paty's family and some 400 guests at the Sorbonne University, giving the teacher... France's highest award, the Légion d'honneur. It should be noted that Paty had been the subject of an online hate campaign after he showed people's cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad during a class on free speech. This was widely shared by a mosque in the northern Paris suburb of Patin. The government has now embarked this mosque for a six-month closure while dozens of raids have been carried out by police with plans to dissolve a group that supports Palestinian militant group Hamas. Patis killer Abdullah Anzorov, an 18-year-old originally from the Russian region of Chenya, was shot dead by police shortly after the assault. That ends today's news from DBS TV. Thanks for watching and do have a lovely evening in the company of our programs.